So we do have authority. And we want to work with God. We don't want to work against Him. We don't, we don't want to be found sitting in a pew, not believing, sitting in a chair in church thinking we're okay. And we don't want people to be there either. We want them to know they're okay with God. To give them that assurance that they're born again. And anybody can lead someone to Christ. Anybody can. And it's not a complicated prayer. And if it makes you nervous, then just write out the prayer so you got it on you, so you can use your cheater sheets so you don't forget anything. I did that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, there's just a few things you got to cover. I repent. I believe. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you for forgiving me. I accept you as Lord. Anybody that's born again can lead someone to Christ. And then, and then, you began to disciple them. Begin to teach them what you know. Anybody can teach what they already know. Because you're already ahead of them. See, the enemy would like you to think, well, you've got nothing to say to anybody. Look at you. But that's not the truth. We already know that God can save us, that he's healed us, that he's changed us so far, that he delivered us. You know, I mean, when I told some of my relatives I was demon-possessed and got delivered, they all like went south, you know, it's like, what? But, you know, as time goes by, they think about it. As time goes by, they have problems. Sometimes they come back and then you talk to them. I led a cousin to Christ about four years ago over the telephone. First time I called her, well, I just got her number. I hadn't talked to her in years and started talking to her and told her about my life, you know, and that God had saved me, and I was, you know, a preacher at that time, and so on and so forth, and she was like, really? And I said, would you like to know Jesus? Yeah, I really would. Yeah. So you want to pray this prayer? And you can be born again right now, Christmas. She prayed the prayer with me on the phone. She got born again, and I check in with her every so often. I sent her some books and things to read. She's in a church now where she lives. And she said to me when I called her the next time, thank you, that really has changed my life. I feel so much better. You know, it's that simple. And that's what God wants to use us to do. He gives us authority that we might be able to stand up to the wiles of the enemy and that God then can begin to flow through our lives and use us. And I'll tell you what, uh, it'll change, it'll change you. It'll change you when you can step out of fear and just do that hesitating thing the first time. I remember the first time. I was scared, really scared. But scared didn't stop the Lord. It just would have stopped me. Sometimes we just have to press out there and just do it, recognizing it's people's choice. Do you know what I realized? This is my thinking. If people can go to a bar and talk about their trouble and all the stuff that they do and are in, right? All the trouble they're in and all this stuff. They talk about it incessantly, right? Or you meet somebody in a restaurant in the market. I can't believe what people would tell you in the market line about their life when you're waiting in line. I mean, they tell you, I mean, it's like, <laughs> you can't believe it. The things that have happened to them, how they've been hurt, things that have happened to them. I mean, but they want you to listen to them. And I figure, if I listen to them, they need to listen to me. Okay, now I've listened to you, I'll say to somebody. Now let me tell you about me. And then I give them my testimony, short, brief testimony. You know, you can make your testimony really long. And you're, when you're saved as long as I have been, I could go on for hours. Nobody wants me to hear hours. And go make, suck it up, make it really short. Two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. You know, just make, hit the high point. In fact, we have a form at church. I'll have to bring some out here where you can work through your testimony so you can write it out and you can have a short one and a medium one and a long one. So if somebody asks you about your, how you got, what happened to you, then you can tell them because you kind of get it in your mind by writing it down, the, the, the process that you went through. But uh, if, and if you're going to listen to other people, you drive a bus, you listen to people, don't you? Lots of them at a time, right? Yeah. Well, 
You know, I mean, it's that kind of thing. People expect you to listen to them. So there'll come a time that you're going to have an opportunity for them to listen to you. And that's kind of the way I look at it. So if I'm going to listen to them, they need to listen to me a few minutes, right? Exactly. I'll tell you what. Everybody's talking out there, but it's the ones talking about Jesus that are saying the words that bring eternal life. Amen? That's the key. Praise God. So let's work with God, not against him, knowing that he's given us the authority to, what does it say? Hmm. Drive out demons? Speak in new languages? Pick up serpents? Even if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will get well. Hallelujah. I mean, what more can you ask? And then he says, if you just go and preach the gospel, I'll do all these things through you. I'll help you. I'll be right there working with you. That's cool, isn't it? We're not alone. We're never alone. Praise God. Any questions?